Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor and uh, here we're going to learn how to perform definite integral or do a definite integral in uh, graphing mode. If uh, you don't know what a definite integral is if you're in algebra and you don't even know what that really means then uh, feel free to watch this section but don't get too worried about it if you don't quite get it. It's really something from calculus. Um, but I think that most people watching this, I think I'll be able to explain it well enough uh, to be able to do to do that with no problem. Uh, let's go ahead and find, uh, let's go ahead and put a graph on the screen here. Let's do x squared uh, plus 3. And let's graph it. And you'll see that it's a parabola that's shifted up a little bit above the x-axis. Okay. Now when we say we're trying to find a definite integral, what it means is from two points A to B, any two points we pick, what we're really trying to find is what is the area underneath this curve from the curve down to the x-axis. And that's the definition of what a definite integral is in calculus. So we go into the math menu uh, here, F5, and we just did derivative. So just under that is integral F of x dx. That's what this symbology means here. So we go to number seven and it's asking me for a lower limit. So I told you, we have to pick two numbers, a lower limit and an upper limit, and it'll find the area of the curve under, uh, underneath the guy between those two points. Now you can, you can find a trace point and do that, but if you have an exact point, you can just type it in, negative one, let's say, for the lower limit, hit enter. And for the upper limit, which is what it's asking for now, you can go off over here, uh, if you'd like, and uh, you know choose something but you might pick something exact, 1.5. So from a lower limit of negative one to an upper limit of 1.5, it shades the graph and it tells you that the integral of this function over dx is equal to 8.95. So this is exactly the number that you would get if you are in calculus, if you take this equation, find the integral of it and perform the definite integration, the number that you would get would be 8.95 and it tries to shade it for you. All right, so that's basically in a nutshell how you do it um, but as you do this more and more you might get a lot of shading on the screen the only way to get rid of that shaving uh, shading is to regraph the screen so just hit F4 and any shading or anything that's that's going to be there is going to be redrawn uh, now let me show you a couple of uh, additional things that I think are neat let me go uh, here and to, to this guy instead of plus three let's do it as um, minus five let's say so we're gonna shift it down the other direction and I'm gonna use this opportunity to teach you a little bit about calculus um, but also just to give you a little bit of practice with using this so let's go ahead and continue to do this guy let's go and do the integration number seven definite integral and let's do it just for kicks let's do it uh, from here which is 2.405 and let's go up to here could be any number doesn't really matter so we let it think for a second and it's going to find the area of this curve from the curve down to the x-axis and if you were to do this integration by hand you would get 5.52 uh, 55 okay so what I want to point your attention to is anytime the area that you find is above the x-axis see here we're shading from the, the curve down to the x-axis any area up here you're gonna get a positive number uh, let me go ahead and regraph it. Same exact graph, not changing anything. I'm just clearing off that shading. Now let's go back in and do the integration number seven. And instead of finding an area over here, let's pick two points down here. So let me pick a lower bound here, right? And for the upper bound, I can do anything I want. I can type in something. Let's do one, you know, 1.2. And we'll hit enter. And it's going to shade this. Now notice that the integral that we get here is negative. So I guess what I want to point out to you is a little bit of a calculus lesson mixed in with a little bit of a calculator lesson. Any area that you get that's above this x-axis from a curve down to the x-axis is going to give you a positive number for uh, an integral. Uh, anytime you get a shading that's below the x-axis, you're going to get a negative number for the integral. 
the number itself does represent the area here. The negative sign just tells you that this area is below the x-axis. That's, that's all it is. It's not a magical negative number. Or it doesn't mean anything crazy. It just means that when it's negative, the area falls below. And that's because when you're calculating the integral, you're always finding the area from your curve to the x-axis. So if you're dipped below, then the area that you find must lie below the x-axis. So we just call it negative. All of the areas over here uh, we'll find uh, is positive. Let me give you one more sort of example, a combo example. Let me regraph it and let it let it draw here. I'll show you something interesting. If you go into the math menu here and hit integral or definite integral, uh, let's pick a point. Uh, let's say here. So we're going to have a first point that's below, as it's dipped below here. And for the second point, let's go on over into the positive region here. So when I hit enter, it's going to try to calculate the total area between the, this curve and the x-axis here. So we're going to shade this region here. Also, it's going to shade this region here. Let's look at what's going on here. So you'll see that that's happened. And the total area that we have is negative. And we'll talk about that in a second. What the calculator's done, and, and also this is not just a calculator thing. This is just a calculus thing, the way calculus works. This area of this part that it calculated is a positive number because this area lies above the x-axis. This area down here is a negative number because this area lies below the x-axis. But when you're finding a definite integral from A being here and up to B over here, what, what the calculus does is it really finds this area and it finds this area and it just adds them together. So this is a negative area, this is a positive area, uh, and you just add them together. So the total answer in this case was negative 3.74 only because the amount of area that we had that was negative was actually slightly larger than the amount of area that we had that was positive. If I stuck this second point way over to the right and had a much larger positive area over here, then the answer would have been positive. Um, so that's just the way the calculus works. When you're doing an integration of a function that dips below the x-axis and such, when you, um, when you find the integral there, what it's doing is adding up the total area. Any parts that are negative count as negative areas. Any parts that are positive count as positive areas. You just add them up to find the total uh, integral there. And I think we can sort of uh, see that a little bit better if we change the function. Let's make this function y is equal to x, a nice straight line. And I think we'll be able to, to see that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this right now. Let's go and, and uh, calculate the integral number 7. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and choose this as our lower limit, x is equal to 0. And for the upper limit, rather than uh, coming up here and picking a random number, I'm going to pick something uh, exact, x is equal to 5. So we'll hit Enter and let it calculate that area. So from this point up to x is equal to 5, it has calculated the area under this curve, which is 12.5. Uh, if you do the calculus, you'll find that, that that's the case. Now let me go ahead and regraph it so that we're not looking at that, that area that we had just calculated. Remember the number 12.5, that was this area. Let's go down back to number 7 and do the same thing again. The uh, lower limit here, I'm going to, instead of scrolling left, the lower limit always has to be the lowest limit that to the left that we have. So I'm going to choose negative 5 for my lower limit. And for my upper limit, I'm going to choose 0. And I think you'll see why, because I want to graph the mirror image over here. Negative 5 to x is equal to 0. The area that we get is negative 12.5. Makes total sense, because the amount of this area is exactly the same as the amount of this area, because the points I chose were total mirror opposites of one another. The only difference is that this area lies below the x-axis, and this area over here, the one we did before, was above the x-axis. So yeah, 12.5 is the area. We just have a negative sign here. So just to review the bidding, 12.5 for this positive area, 12.5 for this negative area. So let's graph it one more time. Now let's do them both together. We'll do number 7. For our lower limit, let me choose negative 5. For my upper limit, let me come all the way over here, way past the 0 point, and choose positive 5. Hit Enter. It's going to calculate the total area, and look at what we get. We get a number of 0. 
Uh, and at first you might look at this and say, how can the area be zero? That doesn't even make any sense because I've got area here. It's shaded the area. How can it be zero? But now that I've broken it up for you, I think you understand. This counts as positive area. This counts as negative area. And when you add them together, the integration just adds them algebraically, so you get zero. Negative 12.5 plus 12.5 gives you zero. And that works for any function. So if you have a function that crosses the x-axis a bunch of times and you do an integration, some of the areas below, some of the areas above, the total integration uh, is zero. Let me show you one more thing before we leave. I'm going to put x cubed for this guy. So I'm going to have two functions on the screen. I want to show you how to handle how to do this with two functions. Uh, and in fact, it didn't erase that shading. Notice that it didn't erase the shading. If you ever find that that happens, just hit F4 to redraw the entire screen. It'll force it to graph both functions again and remove any and all shading that you put sort of on the screen. So we have this guy here. All right. Now, what if we wanted to find the area of, uh, of uh, this line to come out from you know over here somewhere? Well, if we go over here to uh, integration number seven, we're automatically going to be stuck on line number one. It's automatically going to start to trace along the first line in our equation editor here. So if we wanted to find area, we would just uh, go over here and, uh, and perform it normally. So we hit enter, go over a little bit farther, let's say, for the upper bound, hit enter. It'll think for a second. It'll give us a nice shaded area, tell us it's 8.32 or 8.37206. Now, if you wanted to find some area of another curve, uh, when you have more than one curve drawn, you need to make sure and pop yourself over to the other curve so that you can select your point. So just hit down arrow, and now you're tracing the other graph. And we're sort of off, off the scale here, so let me go ahead and drag the cursor back down because we've scrolled so far to the right that we're actually kind of off the screen. So let me go ahead and select our first point here. And for the other guy, let's go ahead and pick something we can see well on the screen. So we'll hit the second point there. It'll think for a second. It'll shade under that curve and give us an area of 4.20641. So if you have more than one graph, just use the top and bottom arrow keys to pop you to the graph that you want. Select your points or type them in, and you'll find the area under the curve, which is what we call a definite integral in calculus. So it's a great way to check your work. Uh, a lot of times in calculus, you're finding the definite uh, integral of something and to be able to do it in your calculator just uh, not only helps you get the right answer and helps you check your work but it helps you visualize what you're doing which is really a huge benefit when studying this material